Welcome. Thank you for uh, having me back. This is awesome. I appreciate it. Um, you know, especially want to thank Adam and uh, Dan Becker since they're the ones that I communicate with and make this happen. Um, so I too will be shooting, or we'll be talking about shooting um, to an extent, uh, but mostly uh, for me, I'm talking about practice design and just using kind of shooting uh, as the example, uh, because as I write and as I talk and I do clinics and so on and so forth, uh, you know, things that I speak on in terms of decision making and small sided games and constraints based learning and all these types of things, uh, even to the extent the last time when I was here uh, and Mike McKay and I spoke and then, you know, we'd go to our dinners at night and it was Mike and I and Dan and we were pretty well had Dan convinced about some of our ideas in terms of game-based learning and so on and so forth. But the one that really sticks with people is shooting, you know, and I think so people are willing to say, well, yes, you know, we need more defense and passing drills because we need to make a decision. You know, we need more defense and ball handling drills because we need to make decisions. But shooting, no, we, we can't go that far on shooting. We still need to do, you know, tons of block practice for shooting. We still need to do tons of, you know, form shooting for shooting and so on and so forth. So um, that's kind of why uh, I'm going to use uh, shooting uh, while I talk about practice design instead of, you know, sticking with, you know, decision making or dribbling or something like that. Um, so before I begin uh, and go into it, there are some assumptions uh, that I am basing this on uh, that you are, may or may not agree, but this is uh, more or less what my ideas are based on. And the first one is no two shots are the same. And so that means within a person, every shot that that player takes is going to be different. It also means between individuals, every shot that you know, I take is gonna be somewhat different than the shot that you take. All right, and if we agree with that assumption, I think it starts to lend itself to some of the things that I'm gonna speak about in terms of shooting and especially practice design. Uh, but there is the idea of repetition without repetition um, from Bernstein, if you go into motor learning literature, meaning that, again, every shot that I take is affected by different constraints. And so those may be individual. So if I shoot and I make the shot, my next shot will be slightly different than if I had missed that shot. I'm gonna shoot with a little bit more confidence. I might be a little bit quicker to take that shot, that next shot. If I miss, I might hesitate. I might not wanna miss two shots in a row. All right, within a game situation, time and score are going to determine how I shoot each shot. They're gonna change every shot that I take. Okay, the pressure of the situation, the pressure that I feel individually is gonna be different than the pressure that you feel individually in the same exact situation. All right, all these things are going to change every shot that we take. Okay, and then talk about defense, the distance of the shot, the speed of movement into a shot et cetera, et cetera. Everything is going to affect each and every shot that we take, and so no two shots are gonna be exactly the same. All right? Um, you know, Dave touched on his non-negotiables. Everybody has their shooting system. No shooting system works, and every shooting system works. Okay, it's what you make of it. All right, so you know, Dave touched on it a little bit with you know, the controversy of turn, no turn, Etc. Does it work? Yes. Does it not work? Yes. Okay. I don't have a shooting system. Okay. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk about how to shoot the ball. This is more about how to practice shooting. Okay. Um, reason being, for me, especially levels that I coach, no player comes in as a complete beginner. Every player starts with some prior knowledge of shooting, some prior instructions, some prior habits. So even if I had a shooting system to take somebody from the ground up, that's gonna be changed by who I'm working with. Okay, I can't just start at the very beginning. 
okay, with every single player. All right, and build and, and spend hours and hours and hours. All right, everybody already has their idea. They have some success or failure. That's going to influence any kind of shooting system. All right. Last one, variability is good. Oftentimes and traditionally, we look at variability as a mistake. To me, Steph Curry is the best shooter. One of the reasons is he's the most variable. He can shoot imperfect shots. He doesn't have to be in the same exact position, the same exact starting point, same exact distance, every single shot. He can shoot successfully, different angles, different speed, different directions, different body positions, different defensive proximity, etc. And his ability to shoot successfully through all this, uh, you know, different constraints and, and different environments is why he's such a great shooter to me, all right? There are other shooters who shoot exceptionally well, but they aren't as good or they aren't as varied in their shots, all right? So, for instance, for me last year, I had four great shooters on my team, okay? I, one of my players finished second in the nation in three-point shooting percentage. I would not say that she was the best shooter on our team. She had the highest shooting percentage from the three-point line, all right? But of those four, it's definitely not one. She's probably not two. She might not be three. Okay, even though she had the highest percentage. The, to me, the other players were able to take and make more difficult shots. Her shooting percentage was partially a product of how she was used in our system and the types of shots that she took and her shot selection, which I'll get to later. Okay? Um, the players who were able to shoot uh, with greater speed or with, you know, more defense, closer defensive proximity, to me, although their percentage were slightly lower, to me they're probably more valuable shooters um, because of their ability to get off those shots. So before I go any further, the number one way to develop better shooters, start on age-appropriate baskets with age-appropriate balls. All right, tweeted this yesterday without saying in so many words, okay, whenever there's a simple solution, we say it's too hard. We want a complicated answer. You guys want drills, you want instruction, you want to see how we teach shooting at higher levels. Get young players shooting on lower baskets with a smaller ball. The number one way to improve shooting. When we coached in Denmark, our players didn't move to a 10-foot hoop until under 14s, I believe. They're still using, our boys were using a 28-and-a-half foot ball, uh, 28-and-a-half size 6 ball until 14 years old. Okay? Consequently, when I had a 17-year-old playing on my team, on my adult team, he shot the ball from high, probably too high. But he was able to do that because he was able to learn and shoot from distance when he was young because he was playing on a lower hoop with a smaller ball. Most of the things that we do as shooting coaches or coaches at the high school level and beyond in terms of shooting are correcting mistakes. Most if not, many if not most of those mistakes are due to players starting and getting many repetitions on baskets that are too high with balls that are too big for their hand. Again, Dave kind of alluded to this as well. I, I know when I was young, I never shot on a hoop that was lower than 10 feet and I never used a smaller ball. But I also never played organized basketball until I was 12. I did not have 
thousands and thousands and thousands of repetitions and practices at eight, nine years old on a 10-foot hoop. I just shot around for fun, played at recess. I didn't really start practicing until I was 12 or 13. Okay, if we're going to start leagues, if we're going to start coaching with eight-year-olds, they need to have age-appropriate baskets, age-appropriate balls. It's the number one way to improve shooting. All right, now, I probably should have put this as one of the assumptions, but to me, any instruction needs to start with a game. Anytime we're going to do a drill, we have to understand why is that drill better than just playing the game? How are we going to improve more through this drill than simply allowing them to play? Because ultimately, everything we're doing is trying to improve game performance. Once we remove something from the game, and the further we remove it from the game, the harder it is to get transferred back to the game. Okay, so ultimately when we're practicing, our goal is transfer. Okay, we want whatever we practice to improve performance in a game. Practice performance improvement, it's great, but it doesn't mean anything. Okay, unless you're preparing players, you know, to shoot in a three-point contest or a free throw contest or something like that, Ultimately, the goal is to improve your shooting so that you can shoot better during games. If it does not improve game performance, it did not transfer, whatever you did. Okay, so first thing is we have to start with the game and any time we're going to remove, and in this case, practice shooting, we have to consider why we're doing that instead of playing. Usually, it's to get more repetitions. It might be to focus on something specific, okay, with some, some specific instruction or feedback, trying to correct some specific mistake, draw more attention to that mistake that we're trying to correct, because within the flow of a game, attention is going to be divided on many different things. Okay, a player can attend to keeping their elbow in or stopping on balance or whatever it is that you're trying to correct with the drills. All right, so when we do shooting drills, we have to know how we're trying to improve shooting and what we're doing to make that improvement. All right, so let me get three or four of you, please. And, okay, there's four of you, so we need three balls, please. So you're going to start on the uh, right block. So we'll do, we won't do the full drill, but, so this is the drill that I picked up when, when I coached in Sweden years ago. Okay, so we call it eight-minute shooting. Okay, I do it often in practice. All right. They would shoot for eight minutes. As a team, they're going to make 35 from the block, 35 from the block, then 35 from the elbow, 35 from the elbow. Once they complete those, they're going to shoot threes. All right, for us, it used to be you had to make 15 threes in a row. Now, if you don't make, tw or sorry, you have to make 15 threes. If now, if you don't make 20 threes, then you run for every, you run a sideline for every one under 20. Okay, um, so for right now, Let's make 10 from each spot. You got that? Yes? Do we have questions about what we're doing? So 10 from each spot, and then let's make five threes. Ready, set, go.
Now, for whatever reason, whenever I do this with non-Americans, they go block, block, elbow, elbow. My teams in the States always go block, elbow, block, elbow. Doesn't really mean anything, I just think it's an interesting observation. All right, threes, 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 threes. Let's just make one three. Make one three. One. One. Yes, one. Uh. There we go. All right. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Now. That is a drill that I like. That is a drill that I do at almost every practice. How does that really improve shooting? Okay, I use that drill to get repetitions. I use that drill because it's motivating for players. Okay, I have found over the last few years, my players respond most to timed shooting drills and or make a certain number of shots in a row. Okay, so I know the shooting drill that my girls loved last year, they would shoot from a spot until they missed two shots in a row. And then they would move shots and they would compete to see who could shoot the most shots. Okay, they would make 150, 170, shots without missing two in a row from the three-point line. All right? If they can make that many shots in a row, is that drill really improving their shooting? Okay? So, the four kinds of drills that I've kind of identified, I, I essentially stole this idea from um, Bonderchuk, who is a strength and conditioning coach and a little bit of a track coach, especially in the throws. Um, and so he kind of came up with four exercises to improve, especially, like I said, shot put discus. Um, and so I've kind of used that as a template uh, for drills within basketball and specifically shooting. So that, to me, is an example of a general shooting drill. Okay, or a general exercise. Um, to me, most of the drills that we do are general drills. For the most part, the purpose is to get repetitions. Those repetitions could be good, they could be bad. All right, but if you look at just about any NBA player and what they talk about, what they're going to do in the offseason, they're going to get reps and reps and reps. College coaches, ah, oh, my players just need more reps shooting the ball. We just need more reps. Well, that drill gets a lot of reps. 
Okay, it's a general shooting drill. I always do it at the beginning of practice. To me, it's a little bit of a warm-up drill. All right? I do not think that it makes any kind of specific improvement in shooting. Doesn't make it bad. All right? General shooting drills especially are good for younger players or players who aren't as good at shooting. Older players, better shooters, probably aren't getting a lot from that drill other than, like I said, a little bit of a warm-up. All right, hopefully a little bit of confidence from seeing the ball go through the basket. Second category, specific preparation. These are your drills that are going to focus on making a specific change to your player's shooting technique. All right, most of these drills for me, I do these in individual sessions. So we run you know, team practices just about every day. And then around my player's school schedule, I have them come in uh, and we do individual workouts. I do not, they're not mandatory. And I do not tell the players what to work on in their individual workout. They have to schedule them with me. They have to show up and tell me what they want to work on. Okay, but most of the specific drills that I do or specific preparation drills that I do are in individual workouts because each individual is different. Some of these now I've incorporated into a shooting warm-up that we'll do occasionally at the beginning of practice. Okay, because some of them are focused on things like balance or coordination. And really there's nobody that's not going to benefit at least a little bit from improving their balance or coordination on their shot. All right, but again, most of these we do in individuals. So a um, couple of the basic ones. One of you. One with the ball. With the ball. So go ahead. Um, scoot back. You're going to hop on one foot. Let's just go two from where you are and then shoot it off one foot. Yeah. No, no, no. That was for you. Who said she was going to mess up? Mm. Do one more. Go on now, left leg. All right. Go right leg again. <laughs> Left leg. Better. All right, thank you. All right, give me a new player who wants to try one. So you're going to start facing that way, wherever you want to shoot from. Okay, you're going to start facing that way. Jump, turn to the basket, and shoot. Uh, how else are you going to jump? <laughs> yes, in the air. Good. Face the other way. Good. Thank you. You're good. So those are just two of the drills, two examples of drills that I'll do, okay, for different reasons, okay? First year, what was your name? Yeah, you. Delaney, okay? So Delaney on her first shot, on her left foot, she's jumping. She's not controlling herself when she goes up to shoot, right? So she's still hopping forward you know, two feet on that shot. Then when she went back to her right foot on the second one, she fell off considerably to her left as she's shooting. Okay? So if we can work on balance off one foot, we're going to be better balanced off two feet. All right? So when I have players who struggle with balance, sometimes with coordination, again, these are some of the drills that I will do. 
Um, I will also use these kind of drills. Um, give me one more player, please. Where do you want to shoot from? Anywhere you want. Yeah, anywhere you want, okay. I'm going to pass you the ball. You're going to shoot as fast as you can, okay? So as fast as you can. As fast as you can. As fast as you can. There you go. Good. Thank you. So one of the ways if I'm trying to make changes to a player's shot, I try not to give a ton of instruction on what I want. I try to get them away from their uh, previous technique. So I have a player on my team right now who when she got here, she shot like she was doing a soccer throw-in, okay? So she shoots like this. Okay, so instead of talking to her and telling her exactly how I want her to shoot, okay, the first thing that we did was put her out here and shoot as fast as you can. Because if you're trying to shoot it fast, you're not bringing it all the way behind your head. Okay, and so we started to get her away from shooting behind her head. And now she shoots somewhere in here. So then, the second thing she did was when she started to shoot with the ball a little bit lower is her shot would almost hit the roof. Okay, she had the highest arc of any player I've ever seen. All right, so next player, next player. Not all at once. So I want you to shoot this one as flat as you can. Okay, as flat as you can. Oh, my fault. You're allowed to use your legs, just shoot it flat. You're allowed to use your legs, just shoot it flat. Okay, this time shoot as high as you can. There you go. Now shoot as high as you can, but make it. There you go. <laughs> Got to shoot as low as you can to make it. Very good. Thank you. So again, for her, for the specific change, these are not drills that I do in a team practice, but for her with the specific change that we're trying to make, okay, these are drills that we use. Shoot as flat as you can to try to get away from the super high arc. Okay, shoot as fast as you can. Okay, now that you're shooting a little bit faster, okay, Faster and flatter, okay, now you gotta make it. Okay, shoot it fast, but make it. And so by using these, adding these constraints to their shooting, okay, we're slowly moving in the direction where we want. Because ultimately, I don't care if she shoots from here, 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 it doesn't matter to me, as long as it's not behind her head. Okay, she has to find the ball position and the shooting technique that's gonna work for her and for her body, okay, and it's a slow process um, that is starting to take hold, okay? So, I mean, she got here in August, it's whatever, middle of October, and she's starting to shoot three-pointers without bringing the ball behind her head with some bit of confidence, okay, in games, okay? She took one I think our first game, first game, our first scrimmage, off her first catch, she shot a three. 
okay? It's a person who came here not as a three-point shooter, all right? Um, now, the third category, specific developmental exercises, game-like shots, all right? So, it is one of the most used phrases, I think, in shooting, game, spot, uh, game shots from game spots at game speeds. To me, those are general drills. All right? For it to be a game-like shot, there has to be defense and there has to be a passing option. Six players, please. Six players. Sorry. Uh, I need two inside the key, the other four in your shooting range. Two inside the key, the other four in your shooting range. Spread out. No, 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 you're good. I was talking to her. Okay? So, two in the key. You guys are on defense. Four outside. You guys are on offense. Okay? You cannot move and you cannot dribble. You could pass or shoot. Those are your options. Yes? Defense, you're trying to fa uh, force three passes. If you force three passes, you win. Got it? Yep. Good. Passer and shooter go in, defense go out. The last passer and the shooter come into the middle, defense goes out. Yep. Passer and shooter in, defense go out. Passer and shooter in, defense out. Passer and shooter. There we go. All right. Thank you. Yes, you can sit. Now, again, that's a simple drill. Okay, but it starts to incorporate the decision to shoot. So one of the hot topics in shooting is game slippage. Well, of course players don't shoot the same percentage in games as they do in practice because of X, Y, and Z. There's defense, there's pressure, they're moving faster, et cetera, et cetera. To me, that just means you're not practicing the right thing. If that's why they're missing shots, why aren't you practicing those things? If you have players who can sit out at the three-point line and make shot after shot after shot, and then they make 32% in a game, and you're gonna say, well, yeah, I mean, but you know, they have to come off a screen, they're running faster, they've got a defender, they've got to decide whether they're open, so you're not practicing what you do in a game. You're doing general shooting drills. For a game-like, for it to be a game-like shooting drill, there must be a passing option and a defender. There must be a decision to shoot. Ultimately, technique doesn't matter if you make the wrong decision, if you can't make a decision, if you can't get your shot off. I believe it was uh, Adam Gorman in Australia, connected with the AIS, um, who put out a study that shows that a defender changes the biomechanics or the basic technique of a shot. If the presence of a defender is going to change not just 
the result, I think everybody will agree that having a defender is going to make you less likely to make the shot than if you're in a gym by yourself. But it's not just going to change the result, but it's actually going to change the process by which you shoot. What are we practicing if we don't have defense in our shooting drills? Now, I want to shoot open shots as much as possible. But what's open? How open or how far does the defender have to be for you to be open? Okay, like I was talking about my shooters last year. My point guard could shoot pretty well with a defender directly in front of her. She had 38% from the three-point line. But she had a lot of attempts that were James Harden-esque step-backs against six-foot, six-one post players. Because we'd run a pick and roll, they'd switch, and she'd step back and shoot over them. 38% from three on those kind of shots is pretty good. She felt she was open. A girl taller than her, within two feet of her, she still felt open. Other players, somebody's outside the key, they're not open. They don't feel comfortable shooting. They second guess themselves. So then if they do shoot, they miss. That's the decision to shoot. If you don't practice with defense, how do you learn when you're open? How much space you need to feel open? Not to mention being able to shoot under defensive pressure. Because at some point, somebody's going to have to get hit a shot against defense. Might not be a three. Okay, but, you know, the higher the level you go, you can't rely on only shooting layups or only shooting wide open jump shots. Defense is going to have something to say about that, especially with the 24-second shot clock. At some point, somebody's going to have to shoot with some defense there. Or you're playing really bad teams. All right, how, how do you know who that player is? How does that player know who he or she is? How close can that defender be? If every drill has a designated shooter, there's no decision. It might be a good drill. You know, I mean, everybody does their drills out of their own offense. So we set a, you know, we do a basic warm-up drill. So let's go six girls really quickly, please. Three of you on this elbow, outside this elbow with balls. Three of you in the corner down there. Balls. Throw them balls. Nope, to, the cor to this So all you do, curl to the elbow, catch and shoot. Bless you. You're welcome. Start all the way in the corner, please. All the way in the corner. And stop, stop. All the way in the corner. And I want you, like you're coming off the screen in the game, coming as hard as you can. Okay? Go. And stop. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, again, a general drill. We do that. The last two years, all we did was set stagger screens for the girl in the corner. So we practiced shooting, coming to the top, catching and shooting. Okay, that's a general warm-up drill that we would do. 
okay? It's not a game like shooting drill. It is a shot that we frequently shot, that location, speed, but it's not game like shooting. There's no decision. They know exactly who's shooting the ball. Whoever's in the front of the line shooting the ball. Good pass, bad pass. They're the designated shooter. There's no decision to shoot. All right, now, the last category, competitive exercises. These are actual game shots. Okay, small-sided games, scrimmages, whatever. All right, so six players, please. Let's go two over there. Offense and a defense in your shooting range out here. And then, or sorry, offense, two offense in your shooting range and the defense where you would be with the ball up here. So help defense. Yeah, so you're, who's on offense? Who's the other offense? You? Okay. So get in your shooting range. Spread yourselves out so you're not, okay. You're guarding her. You're guarding her. All right. So you start with the ball. You're on defense. You're going to wrap the ball around her back, and then you're going to go. She's going to wrap the ball around your back. Yep. And then you're going to score, or should one of them come and stop you, or she stop you, then you're going to pass the ball. Got it? Whoa. All right. Uh, defense to offense. Good. All right. Thank you. So that is a simple way to start a drill that I use primarily as a shooting drill. Okay, because with an advantage, we should force somebody to have to come over. So we should have two on one on this side. And then we just have to make the decision who's open. On my catch and my open, I shoot the ball. If I'm not open, make the pass and hopefully their defense hasn't been able to recover and we're open there. If the defense does an exceptional job, then we just keep playing. Okay, but that's an example of a scrimmage situation okay, that I use to create game shots because we're, you know, we'll, whatever, we'll play first team to nine, offense, you know, offense scores, keep it, defense, you get a stop. You go to offense, you know, if we have multiple teams, then come in on defense. All right, so it's a scrimmage situation. Okay, that is a game shot. All right, it's a competitive exercise. It's not, you know, the, the pressure, et cetera, isn't identical to a game, but it's as close as we're going to get in a practice situation. Okay, you can't replicate having fans in the stands and the pressure of a game-winning shot in a practice situation. Okay, there's always going to be a little bit of game slippage. Okay, for those reasons. All right, you're going to practice in one kind of gym and then you go and you play someplace like this. Okay, the environment's different. All right, but shooting shots in game situations in practice is as close as we're going to get to shooting them in a game. All right, especially, you know, the way we do everything, every drill has a winner and a loser, losers run, we keep track of winners for the whole season. Okay, so I can tell you right now who my best practice player is. Okay, based on wins and losses in practice. Okay. So, within those four categories, Each of them has their time and their place. 
Like I said, for me, at my level, general shooting drills are a warm-up. We do it every, way, every day just to get some reps. Don't really believe it has a positive or negative effect on our shooting. Maybe a slight effect on confidence. All right, general drills are typically going to have more of a benefit the younger the player. Okay, the better the player, the more specific the drill or the shot needs to be. So that could be a specific exercise in terms of how you're going to manipulate or change or correct or improve the technique or specific in terms of putting them in a game situation. Now, to improve shooting, there are three kind of broad categories that I use. So when I'm thinking of, okay, so we're gonna do this drill, why are we going to do this drill? We're going to do this drill to improve shooting. But how specifically? What are we really trying to do to improve shooting? All right? So we can be trying to change or influence or improve technique. We can be attacking the mental side of shooting, most specifically confidence, but the mental side. Or we can be doing something for the tactical side of shooting. So those are the, my three kind of broad categories. Within technique, there's an athletic element and then there's your sport specific or your shot specific technique, all right? So, um, I showed the, the three hop exercise earlier, all right? I also use that for players' balance to improve their general athletic skill, okay, of balance and coordination. Okay, I said that at one of the other clinics that I did here, doing repeat hops without the ball but in dynamic warm-up is the number one exercise that I like to do with players to test coordination. Okay, so what I mean, one player stand up. So just stand on the um, sideline. So you're going to hop on one foot. Out to me. Good. All right, so that's, that's the general exercise that I like. If I could only do one general exercise to evaluate players, that's what I would use. Okay, thank you. Well done. All right, I just think you can see a lot in one exercise. Okay, so adding the shot into it, okay, as I showed before, again, attacking an athletic aspect of technique, okay? Shooting the ball as high as possible, shooting the ball as low, you're as flat as possible, shooting the ball um, as fast as possible. Those are ways that I was attacking her sport-specific technique, all right? Um, so a few of the other specifics, so one player up with the ball, <clears throat> so this time, so start facing the basket. You're going to turn, face the sideline, turn back and shoot. Oh, look at you. Yep. Now, within a drill like this, you can start to see technique things that I would, you know, continue to work on. Were this a player that I was working with? Go again. feel how your feet get to a different position every time when you come back? Yeah. Okay. That would be what I would work on. Okay, it's trying to get a little bit more consistency. 
Okay, off that. Off those jumps. Okay, uh, next player up, one ball. So you're going to start facing that basket, and you're going to jump, turn, and shoot on this basket. Good. See? Same thing, yeah. Nice. Good. Thank you. Next player. Do you know what an ice skater is? Okay. So, one ice skater, then you're going to shoot off one leg. Nice. Oh. Now, control yourself. Go the same way. Get yourself on balance. That's better. Okay? One more. Wherever you want to shoot from. You're going to squat as low as you can and then come up and shoot. It's hard for you, huh? There you go. Lower. There you go. You don't like this one, do you? Good. Pretty good. And one more. You're going to shoot, and you can't bend your knees at all. Oh, sorry. What? Yeah, I didn't tell you where to shoot from. You shoot wherever you want. There you go. Now can you scoot back? There you go. Good. Thank you. So again, depending on what I see with the player, those are some of the you know, specific to challenge their technique or the athletic side of their technique. All right? Um, who hasn't been out here yet? Who wants to run? All right. Uh, yes, to start there. All right, so you're going to sprint to half court, and then you're going to backpedal back as fast as you can. Don't hurt yourself. Oh. All right, I need one more person. You're... Uh, you're, you're too well trained. You didn't do what I want to demonstrate. <laughs> Gotta got try somebody else. You, you lose? You're good? Half court, back pedal back. Go. God, you guys are too well trained up here. <laughs> All right. Well, that backfired. So, 
Usually, when players run to the line, what you see is they turn their body. Okay? So instead of dropping their hips and, and more or less stutter stepping as we did here, okay, they get to the line, all right, and they turn almost always, especially if you're right-handed, you'll turn to your left. Okay? So basically using the turn to break. All right? Dave talked about the turn and shooting a little bit. Again, it's the big debate amongst coaches. There are some who are adamant that you have to turn. They look at NBA players and they say, see, he turns. I would suggest the degree of turn that you have when you shoot the ball has nothing to do with how you shoot the ball and everything to do with how you stop. That is why if you watch Steph Curry... He will shoot his practice warm-up shots when there's no speed, and he will have the very slightest turn on his shot. But you will see him come off a ball screen at full speed, especially if he is going to his right, and he's having to turn all the way back, and he's got a defender closing at him, and he's turned all the way this way to shoot the ball. That's how he's stopping. That's why when you watch his warm-up shots, his feet are fairly close together. But he shoots some shots in games with his feet very wide apart. It's not how he shoots. It's how he stops. Again, that's why every shot will be different. The faster I'm moving... The direction that I'm moving is going to change how I stop. That's why if you feel that you have a player who has too big of a, um, a stride on their shot, okay, so let's say, you know, if we're going to aim for somewhere close to parallel, okay, and I'm too far out in front here, or if you feel a player has too much of a turn, try having them jump stop. Try having them stop right-left. So if I'm a right-handed shooter and I'm a left-right dominant stop and I stop like this, make them stop right-left. It will fix that problem if you feel it's a problem. I worked with a player years ago. I'm walking out his, we worked out and his neighbor had his own hoop gym. So we're walking from his house over and I'm talking to the dad and his dad's like, you know, I bought my son this DVD. Now he turns. It's great. He's got this big turn when he shoots. That's what they told us on the DVD. Said, All right. So we start out with some basic form shooting and move back, no speed. He has zero turn when he shoots the ball. Shooting free throws, he's right here. Put a little bit of movement, and now the guy's stopping like this. Huge turn. Nothing to do with shooting. Everything to do with stopping. When he stepped in left right, he didn't break at all on his left foot. So he's striding, he's striding, he's striding, and now he's starting to stop. And so he's stopping this way. He's got no bend in his left leg. Okay, he's not anticipating the stop. Now he's got a big turn. Again, nothing to do with how he shoots. Form shooting, he didn't turn at all. He turned because of his deceleration. That was his way of stopping. Okay, so have him shoot. All right, step in right, left. Now he's got no turn or a very small turn. Okay, so I have players on my team right now who I've told, I've seen them shoot, so okay, you probably should turn your feet a little bit. I have players on my team right now, I've said, you need to stop turning so much. Okay, it fits with their individual constraints and also with their previous technique that they're coming with. Okay, again, I'm not working with beginners. I'm trying to improve players who already have 
well-trained or well-learned shots, regardless of their rate of success. Okay, they're ingrained, they are deep habits, and I'm slowly trying to improve those habits. Okay, not starting from the beginning. Um, so for some of them, you know, I, one girl had been taught, you know, 10 toes on the line. All right, but she shot with the ball from her left hip. So now she's twisting and shooting this way. Okay, to me, it was going to be harder to get rid of the left hip, okay, than it was just to let her turn a little bit. Now when she brings the ball up, it's straight. I'm working with what she came with, okay, by letting her, giving her the freedom to change her feet, you know, she feels more comfortable, she feels more confident, consequently she shoots better. Her upper body technique really hasn't changed at all. Okay? But she shoots better. Just because she feels like there's a little bit of freedom now. She doesn't have to do one thing. Okay? The first thing I did with a girl, I have a 6-2 center. She comes out, we're shooting threes the first time I work with her. She's going into a deep squat. Like, you're 6-2, why are you deep squatting on a three-pointer. Okay, if you watch... Now, this is one difference between children and adults, NBA players, etc. Okay? Children are not strong. One reason guys like Ray Allen, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, etc. are exceptional shooters and can shoot quickly is because they do not have to bend greatly in their lower body. They're able to stop and shoot quickly. They're able to get the ball high enough, get the ball to the rim, primarily with elasticity. Most sub-high school players are not gonna be able to do that. Many high school players won't either. Their shot's going to be a little bit more strength-based. Okay? They're probably, <clears throat> excuse me, they're probably going to have to squat a little bit more than an NBA player or even a college player. Okay? It is one of the differences. Even if you're shooting on an appropriately sized hoop with an appropriately sized ball. Okay? So using an NBA player as a model does not always work. There are large differences. All right, so with this player, I took her, she's at the three-point line, she's deep squatting. Why? Well, I was always taught I need to bend my knees, and if I miss, I need to bend my knees more. Okay, that's typically what happens. I worked with a 10-year-old one time who came to, to work out with me because he'd been to a number of shooting coaches and I couldn't figure out why he couldn't shoot free throws. He was one of the best 10 year olds in our little neighborhood. Couldn't make a free throw. Shooting, you know, eight feet out, he hardly bends at all. It's all upper bodies, decent technique, good enough. Moves back to the free throw line. Now he starts to bend. Okay? Every time he bent, he bent himself off balance. He just didn't know how to bend properly. And then his coaches told him, bend his knees more. You're missing short, bend your knees more. So now he's here, and he's not even shooting the ball. He's throwing the ball to get rid of it before he falls on his face. Because he's so off balance, okay? That it's less of a shot and more of a, I need to get rid of it so I can step and catch my balance. He didn't need a shooting coach. He needed to learn how to bend. Okay, to, to basically keep his feet flat and sit his hips back to bend instead of throwing his knees out in front of him. Okay, so with her, I, I just had her take the ball at the three-point line. Shoot it. You're not allowed to bend your knees at all. She could get it there, all right? Strength isn't an issue. Let's stop squatting. 
okay? Other things that I use for um, coordination with players because I see that as a problem with a lot of players. Their upper body and their lower bodies don't work together. Either they leak power, they leak power or um, you know, they have a two motion shot. Somewhere in there something's going wrong. The transference of power from their feet into the ball isn't working. All right, so when I have that problem, um, one of you stand up, please. One, please. Okay, I just have them do, we go off the court, we just do med ball throws. Okay, so imagine this is heavy. Okay, really heavy. All right, and so put your hands underneath and you're just gonna uh, squat however low you want and just throw it as high as you can. Up, yes, that's high. <laughs> Good. Doesn't have to be to me, just as high as you can. All right. Now, you're going to do it as quick as you can. So from the time I give you the ball to the time you release it, as quick as you can, but I still want it going high. Okay. Good. Thank you. So with a medicine ball, it obviously changes things, okay? It's fairly easy with a basketball to just stand and throw the ball up in the air, all right? If it's a six, eight pound medicine ball, it's a lot harder, okay? So you have to use your body, okay? And those throws start to teach a player how to coordinate their lower and their upper body together. So then when we get back on the court, we can transfer that feeling into their jump shot. Um, that's been especially successful with um, players who have either a set shot or like a two motion shot, okay? And then wanted to change to a quicker shot or a one motion shot, okay? Because typically that set shot's going to have less of rhythm and coordination between the upper and lower bodies. I also like which again is beyond many's uh, experience level or within job descriptions, but I like doing Olympic lifts with basketball players because I believe that it helps with overall coordination. So cleans, push presses especially, okay? Getting the idea of a quick down and up and getting the rhythm and the coordination between the lower and the upper body. Uh, one of the best shooters that I've ever worked with one of the only really young players that I worked with was uh, uh, he started lifting weights and doing Olympic lifts, you know, with lightweight at the training center where I did shooting at a very young age. And he had great technique with lifts, and he also had great coordination when he shot the ball. You know, and he, you know, was a very good shooter all the way through high school. Um, So one of the reasons why I use some of the individual drills that I showed from a technique standpoint is to create a perturbation or to remove the player from their previous technique, okay? I think, you know, when I was young and a lot of coaches, we instruct more with words Okay, you need to keep your elbow in or you need to bend your knees or whatever the cue is that you're trying to get. Okay, keep the ball centered here. No, it should be here, not here. All right, and to me, if you can create exercises that force them away from the habit that you're trying to break, it becomes easier to move them in the direction that you want than simply using verbal instructions. Now, the second broad category, mental skills. Okay, like I said, to a certain extent, confidence. Okay, last year when I found out that one of my players had been a bad shooter before she came, I, I thought she was a shooter when she arrived. Okay, but she shot 25% from the three-point line in high school. 
All right, so when I found that out, I joked with her, you know, about, you know, teaching her how to shoot. And what she said, she's like, well, I mean, if you want, but, you know, you gave me confidence. And that's one of the biggest things that we do with our team is everybody has the freedom to shoot. We shoot a lot in practice. We play a lot, but everybody has the freedom to shoot, and so everybody shoots confidently. And consequently, players probably shoot better than they would other places. They know they're not coming out of the game for shooting a three. That's what we do. We shoot. Okay, and it doesn't work for everybody, but, I mean, we had our first scrimmage, and we have a girl, first catch of the season for her on offense at the three-point line. She shoots and makes a three. Her freshman year last year, she didn't attempt a three all season. She was a center in high school. She never shot outside. She worked all summer on her shooting. She's improved. Now she has the confidence to step up, and she made her first one. Because she knows that even though she's a post player, she has the freedom to shoot that shot if she's open. All right? Um, so that's the first thing. That's where general shooting drills come in. Seeing the ball go through the net. Making shots in practice helps to develop confidence. Making shots in games reinforces that. Even more important. Um, you know, for us, we especially will do, um, you know, block shooting where we can hopefully make shots in a row like the day before a game. Because I want players going into you know, that night and thinking about the game the next day, feeling confident. That's not where we're going to do our, you know, contested drills or our hardest drills, where maybe we're missing a lot of shots. Okay, I want them confident. We're going to make a lot of shots in a row, feel good about ourselves, come in and play the next day. All right? Um, preparation is also a way to build confidence. Okay, and that's where, you know, the game shots game spots at game speeds. That's where that comes into play. It will help players to feel prepared, especially when they're making those shots. All right? Along with confidence, to me, one of the keys to teaching shooting is to teach self-talk and positive self-talk. How do players react to a mistake? All right? What's their body language? Do they drop their shoulders? Do they put their head down? Or do they keep playing? I would say, at least where I am and with the players that I'm getting, that's one of the biggest things that we try to attack from an overall standpoint. Bless you. Mistake response, self-talk. All right, so I had a team, volleyball team years ago when uh, Talladega Knights had just come out. And I, you know, talked about them, same thing, okay? Mistake, what are we going to do when we make a mistake? I was like, you guys need to come up with something. All right, a mistake response. So you guys can, you know, help each other out, get each other back focused on the next play. So they came out and every time somebody made a mistake, especially like a serve into the net, you'd hear our whole team, shake and bake, shake and bake. Okay, after the movie. Okay, I know um, Dr. Ken Revisa is one of the kind of godfathers of sports psychology. He worked with Cal State Forts in baseball. Uh, they used to put a porcelain toilet in their dugout. And if they made a mistake, you would just see, flush it. Okay, and they kept the toilet in the dugout all year, and that was kind of their cue. Okay, let it go, flush it, next play. Okay, shooters have to have short memories. Like I said at the beginning, if, I'm, if I miss my shot and I dwell on it, that's gonna affect my next shot. It's probably gonna affect my next play on defense as well, but focusing specifically on shooting. If I'm still thinking about my last miss when I shoot my next one, I'm not shooting, I'm not gonna shoot as well, 
as if I had made that shot or if I can forget it. Last big category, tactics. Two major sub, shot creation and shot selection. It's like I talked about with some of my players from last year. The more shots that you're able to shoot, that's improvement. If you go from being a spot up standstill shooter to being able to shoot on the move, you've improved. You can then shoot off the dribble. Now you've improved more. Okay, you add value. Assuming that your percentages aren't dropping. Okay, but if you can shoot the same percentage but shoot more shots, that's improvement. All right, shot selection can lead to improved shooting percentages just by shooting better shots. So for us, a good shot is Rob. You have range, you're open, and you're on balance. As long as you have those three things, it's a good shot. Time and score may dictate otherwise, but outside of the last two to three minutes of the game, if you have those three things, I'm not going to say anything about your, your shot. You're not coming out. Shoot it. That goes for anybody on our team. Now, how you determine somebody's range, that's up to you. What are you comfortable with? Are you going to determine that by their game percentages, their practice percentages, how much in their, they're in the gym practicing, what shots they're taking when they're practicing? Now, I mean, all but one player on my team, it's the three-point line. And she knows it. We do shooting drills. I think it's hilarious. We'll do a three-point shooting drill, and then you'll see one player in the middle of the court with her own ball because she doesn't shoot threes. She knows she's not a shooter, so she goes to where she feels she can make shots, and that's where she practices. Everybody else is shooting around her, and she just stands there. She goes, gets her own ball, and shoots during team drills. She knows her range. All right, so uh, give me one player. Oh. So the girl last year who shot was second in the nation in three-point shooting percentage, when she came into her individual workouts at the beginning of the year, she said, I, th I think I'm a, you know, I think my shot's okay, but once I start breathing heavy, I don't make shots. So that was our specific practice, okay, is start running. <laughs> she would run, come to the elbow this time. Yeah, run to half court and then come to the elbow. So she would run a little bit, and then I'd let her shoot just to keep her interested. And then she would keep running. <laughs> Wherever you want. Where do you want to shoot from? You breathing heavy yet? Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Are you breathing heavy? Yeah? Okay. Now keep going. So the drill didn't start until she was starting to breathe heavy. And then we would... Are you just trying to show that you're breathing heavily? No way. <laughs> let's go, let's go. I'm not going to let you leave on a miss.
Good job. So that's what she wanted to attack, and those were the shots that we needed to improve so that she could take more shots in games. So we would go, we would get her breathing heavily, and then the drill would start. Whatever drill we were going to do, make three in a row, make five in a row, make seven in a row, whatever it was, but the drill didn't start until she was already breathing heavily. All right? Uh, give me, let's go two player, three players, please. Put the ball down. One of you is a screener, then an offense and a defense, anywhere you want on the baseline. You're the screener, face them. So you're going to use her screen or get open however you want. Okay, you have one dribble to score off the catch. Okay? You can start from wherever you want, you can run wherever you want, but you get one dribble on the catch. You can move, just don't set a moving screen. You're not trying to hurt her. Switch. Switch, you get to, do, you get out to play offense now. Who didn't listen to the directions? Who didn't listen to the directions? Why? No? One dribble. Go again. Now, what was your mistake that time? Hmm? Okay, what else? Before that. Why should you have gone out far enough? What is far enough? How did she guard your screen? So what should you do? This. Okay? So, part of creating, thank you. Part of being able to create more shots is being able to read screens and use screens. Okay? So whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, three on three. Okay, same idea. Okay, by limiting the dribbles and the passes after using the screen, force them to make shot, basically force them to be able to get shots off the screen. Okay, as opposed to just, you know, letting them come up, get the ball, and then just play one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, we want to teach them to use the screen and be able to shoot off that screen. It's also going to add a little bit of defense and a little bit of um, decision making. When I catch the ball, am I open? Okay, or should I use that one dribble? Should I shot fake, use a dribble? How can I get away from the defensive player? All right, so in terms of shot selection, I walked into a gym several years ago at a Division II school. I watched a girl, she was out shooting on her own. She looked like a decent shooter. I went up and I talked to her. I was like, what did you shoot last year from three-point rent? 14%. I was like, wow. I was like, well, what's your goal for this year? 40%. thought that was a little optimistic. She had a decent shot. She should not have been a 14% shooter. As I talked to her, I was like, well, you know, what happened? She's like, oh, well. My coach killed my confidence. She used to yank players in and out of games. You know, if we missed a shot, she'd take us out. You know, I lost my confidence. You know, she played mind games with us, et cetera, et cetera. So this girl had a new coach. The new coach, you know, ran a different system, encouraged more shooting. I believe she shot 37% for the season. She was in the top 10, I think, in her conference. I can safely say she did not change her shooting technique 
much at all. From 14% to 37% without doing anything to her technique. She took better shots. She played for a coach. They gave her confidence. All right, so that's how shot selection can improve a player shooting. That's one way to improve shooting. Okay, in addition to, like I said, the shot creation. Okay, um, those are, you know, one way being able to shoot more shots is expanding your skill. Shooting better shots potentially is restricting that skill. Some players, that's necessary. Okay, some players do it naturally. All right. Um, that coach, by the way, is speaking next. Um, so, in summary, a drill solves a problem. That's why we're removing it from the game. Just playing isn't doing what we need it to do to improve whatever, in this case shooting. If we're just doing the same thing every single day, and we still have the same problem, the drill's not working. Like I said, now, I do some drills every day, eight minute shooting. To me, it's a general warm up. I do not expect that drill to change my player's technique or to significantly improve their shooting percentages. That's a warm up for us. Hopefully, it builds a little bit of confidence. It gives our players the idea that everybody here is a shooter. Okay, the other drills that we do, those are the more specific drills, those are the ones that if there's not a change that I can see, if there's not a change in the shooting percentages, that's where we need to think about our drill selection and how we're gonna do things. Ultimately, you need to decide how are you gonna determine what drills are working and what aren't. I talked to an NBA coach a couple weeks ago, went to his practice. He just said that flat out. I don't know what drills have any effect. I don't know if anything we're doing right now is really making these players better. This is an NBA organization that is known for player development. And he's like, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you if this, this drill improves players at all. How are you going to measure whether your drills are working or not? All right, ultimately, once we remove something from the game, its impact needs to be on the transfer to the game on improving game performance. Thank you.